Hi everybody, my name is Manasa. I'm currently working as a principal application engineer at Discover. I appreciate this opportunity and I'm excited to share my experience and learnings as a platform engineer in the Platform Conference 2023. As at Discover, I'm part of the platform enablement team providing developers and other stakeholders with tools and resources and infrastructure to build applications and uh, services on top of our modern pl software platform. Before this, I was a full stack uh, application developer where I was coding applications in Java, React, uh, Node.js and was on the consumer side of using AWS and GCP based platforms. So in this talk, I'll share my learnings from this journey of transitioning from application developer to platform engineer and why a renewed perspective is needed when you move from being the consumer of the platform to enabler of the platform that you're building. I have grouped my learnings into broad categories forming the six point agenda that you see here. And I'll start my discussion with the uh, patterns. As software developer, I'm used to finding reusable patterns to commonly occurring uh, software design problems. But from platform context, I found that platform patterns needed to be adapted or applied in a different way than in traditional software development context. Let's see how. Let's take an example of observer pattern. Observer pattern defines one to many dependency between objects. So if one object changes the state, all its dependents are notified and updated automatically. The implementation details may differ from Java and Node.js, but the basic concept of the observer pattern remains the same in both languages. So if you are a Node.js developer and I am a Java developer, the observer pattern works for you and me the same way. But that might not be the case when you're building the platforms. Yes, platform patterns are useful, but they often need to be adapted or applied in a different way. I observed that there are three primary reasons why uh, patterns are not found to be uniform across all platform implementations. One, the first one is the contextual difference. Uh, platform enablement may require designing APIs and interfaces that are flexible and extensible, while also maintaining backward compatibility with existing systems. So this may require a different approach to applying patterns in a traditional than in a traditional context. Then there are diversity of use cases, situations where we have microservices based platform incorporating legacy monolithic services that have not been designed to work with microservices. So this can, uh, this can create uh, challenges establishing a uniform pattern. Then within the larger ecosystem of third party applications and services, patterns that uh, work well in isolation may not be suitable for integrating with others systems or applications. So as a platform engineer, I observed that one team's implementation of a pattern might not always work for other team if implement, even if I implement in the same way. So let's take sidecar uh, platform pattern, for example. There are multiple ways to implement this. So you can implement the sidecar by deploying it as a separate container alongside the main application container, or you can implement it as a separate process within the main app container or you have you can use the functionality implemented as a library and integrate it with the main app code or um, you can have it act as a reverse proxy handling incoming requests and forwarding them to the main app container and then there is an approach where sidecar can be deployed as a daemon set which ensures a copy of sidecar runs in each node in the cluster so to implement that correct sidecar pattern the needs and the requirements of the system uh, it will be used in should be considered very closely. My second observation is with respect to the code. If we take a general uh, components of an application code, you would have a business logic, user interface, data access, testing, error handling, uh, deployment and packaging. All this code is stored within a single repo in a GitHub and the um, scope is restricted to a single service. In contrast, when you see the components of the platform code, it is much more complicated. You have core services, configurations, middleware configuration, security, deployment, monitoring, integ integration, and all of these components and configurations usually follow the infrastructure as code and use Helm or Terraform to automate the provisioning and management of infrastructure, such as servers, networks, and storage. So at the end of the day, it is still code. 
code for application and for configuration code for platform infrastructure. Everything is stored in GitHub. But there is one key important aspect between the two codes. The application code is usually bounded by limited scope. It has fewer dependencies and it uh, and is less constrained by standards and has contained change management. The platform code, on the other hand, uh, is an amalgamation of complexity and complex code code bases. So obviously, the complexity of the code base increases and the customizations may also be necessary. Maintaining the code can become challenging, especially when dealing with complex dependencies. So a very common miss with um, infrastructure of as code is what we is that we tend to put the code quality in the back seat and focus on automating the infrastructure rollouts. Overall, while maintaining the platform code, it requires a more holistic approach that takes into account of interdependence of its components. It, that is why it is very clear, uh, important to have this clear understanding of the platform architecture and dependencies, as well as um, to have this rigorous testing and deployment process to ensure that the changes are made in a safe and controlled manner. Next is the debugging, one of my pet peeves. The biggest pet peeve in platform engineering context that I have till date is debugging. It's not that there are no tools to debug platform like Terraform and CloudFormation having built tools, but even this can be challenging because it involves managing the underlying infrastructure uh, and which is complex and distributed. So if you see the debugging process that I have put out on this slide here, it seems more manual, manual on the platform side. And um, this is general process for even for application codes. Probably your debugging session could have could skip few steps or have additional steps. But what I understood uh, debugging the platform issues is often more complex than debugging application code because of two main reasons. One, uh, interdependence of platforms components. And two, the need to collaborate with other teams to identify and fix the root cause of the issue. This all, all this makes uh, the entire process time taking. When I worked for a small startup company, it was we adopted a policy of you do it and you own it. So I knew the application architecture and the platform that I deployed uh, end to end. Now I work for a much bigger organization where executing the same policy is just not feasible. So we need to understand that the processes that once worked for us might may not work for us here. The next is choices. How do we decide? Where do we start? When it comes to platform choices, there are several options to consider, depending on your use case and needs, of course. So if you talk about cloud-based plat platforms, you have AWS, Azure, GCP, container platforms, Docker and Kubernetes are famous there. And uh, development platforms uh, involves many application services written in different languages, uh, version control systems, and coming to the data platforms, you have Hadoop, uh, Spark, Cassandra, Oracle DB, and RDS. So ultimately, the choice of the platform should depend on your specific needs and requirements, budget, team expertise, and strategic goals. But extreme care should be taken not to build platforms by stitching immature technologies together. That is the biggest mistake one can do. When it comes to platform choices, I drilled it down to six key things. The first lesson is to understand the needs uh, like scale of your project, tech stack, budget, and your team expertise. We then need to consider the broader ecosystem of tools and services that uh, surround it. And then it's better to avoid dependency on a single platform, vendor lock-in, and choose platforms that use uh, open standards and offer easy migration paths. And have a secu uh, strong security measures in place, such as encryption and regular security audits. It is also important to choose or build platforms that are the future proof, meaning they can they should be able to adapt to changing technologies and market trends. This is usually the trickiest part. And when budgeting, um, don't fail to include factors such as licensing fees, infrastructure costs, support costs, and also the potential for cost savings through automation and efficiency improvements. The next is marketing. Why do we have to market? So while building applications, we often work with product team to guide us uh, through the requirements of app and build it as per their ask. This is not a new thing. Uh, it is usually the norm. But there is an exciting aspect about working with um, platforms. 
this is the marketing and selling um, aspect of what we built yes in internally developer uh, internally developed platforms and improved enablement processes offer um, known benefits to organizations like increased productivity faster time to market and um, improved consistency but marketing the solution we build brings awareness and generates enthusiasm for the solution which can increase the adoption rates it can help showcase the unique features and benefits that the new platform provides it can demonstrate the return on investment and help decision makers understand the long term benefits of this solution there is no suggested pattern or method to sell this platform internally but it usually depends on the rapport you have with the other teams good documentation um you know and lunch and uh, learn sessions can also help now we must launch launch our platform application rollouts to production uh, is a comparative thing and uh, it's pretty much straightforward but we need to be a bit smart to launch our platform enablement processes or um, idps so uh, unlike the application or service launches platforms typically launch with a moment in time to ensure sustained success continuous feedback loop is necessary to forge a long term partnership between part platform team and developers and any other consumers that uh, use our platform when trying to forge this partnership we need to find uh, different teams with varied pace to deploy their services we tend to find few teams who would want to quickly uh, launch their product and are willing to cut corners if needed these are our pressured partners few other teams are very cautious of rolling out unless they see proof of reliability availability slos slas of the platform so these are our over cautious partners for launching the platform for the first time the key is to find those uh, fitting partners the goldilocks partners who are neither in a great hurry to deploy the services nor are too slow to proceed these partners bring any enough visibility to be recognizable they are agile enough to ship quickly and are savvy enough to provide um, the feedback needed to ensure a great launch apart from this like any product good documentation support prompt bug fixing and stability contribute to the quick adoption of the platform by teams ho oh, was this too long uh, no problem so let me quickly summarize the key points of my learnings for you for platform enablement before we blindly implement known patterns or copy the patterns from other team focus on the user the success of the platform ultimately depends on its users um design for scale platform should be designed to accommodate growth and scale both in terms of users and features emphasize the modularity keep in mind the, that the components and features should be easily added and removed as needed and uh, you should provide easy integration enable customization so that uh, users can have the experience to tailor their specific needs and preferences as they need and ensure security security should never be a uh, uh, take a back seat it should be a priority and implement robust security measures to protect user data and prevent unauthorized access platforms can um, benefit from fostering community of users and contributors like inner sourcing who can share knowledge provide support and help improving improve the platform over time and also have a mindset of continuous improvement so that platform should be uh, designed with a mindset of continuous improvement with processes and feedback mechanisms in place to gather user feedback identify areas for improvement and implement the changes and updates over time always keep in mind that even if you have the same use case as any other company first ensure that the platform pattern or platform solution caters to your company's needs and requirements this is because even if the choice is listed out for that company uh, or for any other company or fits for everyone it may still not be the right choice for you hope this was informational for you thank you for your time